Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a dynamic storm system with severe weather, flooding rains, and yet another cold front for the central and southern U.S. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your overall hazard map uh, as of this morning, July the 8th. And we've got excessive heat well watches and warnings out here in uh, the western regions now this uh ridge of high pressure is going to be a little located a little bit further south than what the previous ones are so we've got excessive heat watches and warnings for southern uh oregon getting into southern uh, idaho getting into portions of uh, wyoming here in utah nevada as well as uh, Col uh, california and the desert southwest we also have Flash flood watches and warnings down here for the deep south into portions of the Rio Grande Valley into Corpus Christi, uh, it, getting into portions of near Galveston Bay. And then also we have Elsa with those uh, you know flood watches out here into flood warnings as this is going to be traversing up the coast, uh, the east coast later on this afternoon into tomorrow. So if we expand the view, let's take a look at some of the highlights here. We do actually have a, a cold front that's going to be dropping down here into uh, the central and southern U.S. That's going to kick off some rounds of severe weather that will go over. We have this no-name storm that we've been highlighting of 90, the remnants of 95L has been really packing a punch for the deep south into Texas. We have Elsa traversing up the coastline into the Carolinas. That'll impact uh, the northeast uh, later on today into tomorrow. Uh, but back behind it, there's not much happening in the tropics. I do, I do actually expect a kind of a lull in activity behind uh, Elsa for several weeks to come. A lot of suppressed air is going to be entering the Caribbean and much of the Atlantic. Uh, but down here in the Pacific, I do expect uh, another storm to develop. And that actually is going to bring uh, possibly even some lower temperatures maybe in the next week. For the desert southwest it may even bring them some some increased uh, rain chances uh for them as well so let's take let's zoom into that feature of what was uh 95l here down here in the deep south and man it's been just torrential flooding major rains especially in rockport if we if you recall uh rockport was the place that hurricane harvey made landfall back in 2017 and they got crushed uh, yesterday with 10 inches of rainfall so over the next over the last three days they've had 15 inches and so we got serious flood issues as this is just not really moving very much at all hugging the coast dumping torrential rains inland so that'll be impacting san antonio uh, later on this afternoon into the daytime heating hours and some of this will filter into the houston area but definitely along the coastline if you're in south padre out into corpus christi it's not going to be a pretty day at all so as we expand the view let's take a look at some of those uh, three-day rainfall totals across the country and man the standout here is this no-name storm down here of 15 inches of rain just in the last three days and those are i showed you gonna be adding to those totals with easily an additional another four to eight inches so serious flooding concerns uh down here into uh south of tampa they did have a location in uh, northport that did pick up 11 inches from uh, elsa but more or less it was sporadic with two to four inches some places only got an inch of rain from elsa that'll that's moved up the uh, into georgia into the carolinas but you can definitely see along this uh, northern boundary a good two to four inch swath from south dakota into uh, minnesota as well as into uh, michigan and wisconsin as well with some of the heavier rains the last uh, three days so Here's the latest from Elsa. It is a minimal tropical storm down to 40 miles an hour. It's moving northeast at 18 miles an hour. So it has picked up that forward speed. The latest advisory is expected to increase to a 50 mile per hour uh, tropical storm, but this is gonna be racing so fast. It's gonna continue uh, along the coastline. And that's where they've got that flash flood watches and warning. So it is gonna bring some gusture higher winds and I'll show you those winds uh, here, here in a second. But let's take a look at the overall uh, excessive heat, I mean, excessive uh, rainfall totals that could be taking place. Again, this is moving fairly fast. It's not going to pick up what the no-name system is, but it's still going to pick up several inches of rain in a short amount of time into Raleigh, 
into uh, Richmond, going into DC, into Philly, a little bit higher amounts as it's you know going back over water, maybe regaining a little bit of more intensity and possibly into uh, New York City, getting into portions of Boston and to even into Portland, Maine, where they could see some a little bit higher uh, rainfall totals as this will continue uh, moving up northeast fairly quickly. Uh, back behind it, but here's the overall water vapor imagery. Now, the zero Z, that is six o'clock uh, this afternoon on Thursday. And we've got that system that's going to be diving down uh, with that cold front. And that's going to kick off some severe weather into portions of the Dakotas and parts of Montana into uh, 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 North Dakota as well. So there's definitely a risk for some severe weather later on this afternoon. Uh, there's that system down down in South Texas going to bring more heavy rain into South Texas. And there's Elsa traversing uh, up the coastline as we'll be watching this uh, cold front that's going to continue pressing southward as we go uh, into the weekend, into early next week. But but there's the wind swath for the next uh, several days, which, what's to come with Elsa. Now, from yesterday, this has shifted further out into sea so it doesn't have the stronger wind gust hitting more inland like it did yesterday so that's going to keep the heavier wind gust a outside in the open sea uh, so that is definitely a good thing but yeah you can definitely see some these are gusts too so 40 i mean that's again this is a minimal tropical storm so i mean you know on an average you know you don't get a you don't get a severe uh thunderstorm warning until you're getting you know one of the criteria is a 60 mile per hour so we're talking a minimal tropical storm these are just your your strong your strong thunderstorms that you would get uh into uh you know some of these stronger thunderstorms but as we go and kind of zoom in and to some of the the winds that are going to be impacting like i mentioned from yesterday uh, New York City was looking at 56 miles an hour. It's down to 35 because you can definitely see the higher winds have shifted well offshore. And I think that's going to continue to remain the case. Uh, Providence was looking at 88 mile per hour winds yesterday. Now we're down to 48. So, yes. And these are gusts, too. So, I mean, most of your sustained winds are going to be all your tropical storm force winds are going to be uh, offshore and not going to be impacting uh, land as this continues moving across. But you are going to pick up some some heavier rains uh, with this system. But it is moving at 18 miles an hour, so it's not going to sit and spin and dump a heavier rains for an extended period of time. But as we zoom in to Friday and look at the bigger picture back behind it with that cold front, we're going to have to be dealing with that severe weather pressing further south. So now that severe weather is going to be over Nebraska into uh, Friday afternoon. That's going to filter into portions of Iowa and get into northern portions of Missouri. So definitely in this zone right here, you're going to have to be on the lookout for those stronger to severe thunderstorms with some larger hail included with these uh, with that cold front, cold air aloft. So as this continues to press southward, there's that no name feature down here in the south. This will try to make its way inland. Uh, by the time we get into Friday afternoon, pressing the heavier rains, that's why they actually have the flash flood watches even into portions of Mexico down here. And that will continue uh, pressing east uh, southward as the heavier rains uh, remain uh, south. So as we expand the view into uh, Saturday, July the 10th, yes, there's that cold front. So that's there's your some of your rains going to be along that boundary. That'll be into Nebraska, into portions of uh, Kansas now, into Missouri. Uh, that'll extend. So there's a two-pronged approach down here in the south where they have that boundary with that no-name storm uh, but then we'll be looking at uh, you know out to the north of that cold front pressing southward as you remain dry and much of west uh, out west with that under that ridge of a high pressure and there are some of your temperatures by Saturday this is a pretty potent cold front now of course this is July and we're going into some of the hottest times of the year uh, for the next month. So yeah, when you're seeing, you know, 5, 10, uppers to almost 15 degree below average temperatures, that's pretty impressive for this time of year as this will continue uh, to press southward as we go through the day on uh, Saturday and right along that boundary, we'll have that, those rain chances to deal with. So by the time we go into Sunday, yeah, that's that cold front should be pressing through Oklahoma and into North Texas uh, by then kicking off another round of showers and thunderstorms uh, down here into the south, into Arkansas, into Missouri, uh, lifting, you know, northward back behind that into uh, Illinois, into Indiana. 
where they're taking advantage of some of those cooler conditions and definitely by sunday that those cooler conditions just continue to press further southward now we're seeing those 10 degree below average anomalies pressing into oklahoma that'll eventually filter into portions of uh, texas as the heat wave just continues for much of uh, California. I mean, your average high now is 107 in Phoenix. So even when you're talking four to five degrees above average, that's still one teens uh, possibly out there for them. And as this, this cold front will continue to remain effect and for the central part of the U.S. where that ridge of high pressure just dominates the West and much of the northern states as we continue into the weekend. But as we look at uh, your day on Monday, there's that cold front. You can more or less depict it. Now, this will be slowing down. So this is July. So these cold fronts don't have much oomph to it. It's a, it's even amazing that they're even getting this far, far south, this late into, in, late into uh, July. But yeah, there's that cold front. Well, should press through uh, North Texas and probably going to be stalling out somewhere around this boundary, say possibly, say, in the Waco area. And then it'll actually lift back up you know, as we go into the day on uh, Tuesday, but right along that boundary, we could probably finally say goodbye to that no-name system. And then we'll be getting looking to get rains from the northern, uh, from the north, as that cold front will continue uh, to press southward uh, in time. So as we go through the day on Monday, there's your temperatures. There's your, your 10 to 15 degrees, which much cooler air uh, behind that front. And so the further south you live in Texas, it's only going to be able to get so far. Uh, but then it'll be lifting further back up north. But yeah, you should still see the effects in portions of Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, and Alabama, especially into Kentucky and Tennessee with those cooler conditions uh, come into the day on uh, Monday. There's your water vapor imagery by the time we get into Tuesday, uh, July the 13th. And yeah, back behind that front, we got some much cooler, drier air going to be filtering in a, less, a little bit less humidity, at least for a day or two in much of uh, northern Texas. Uh, but then, yeah, there's that little bit, little bit of precipitation trying to enter, the, enter into uh, portions of uh, the parts of Arizona by then, we could see looking at maybe even below average temperatures for portions of the desert, still triple digits, but maybe not the 107s, you're maybe talking low 100s. So that'll be at least a welcome reprieve or at least some extra clouds are gonna be dealing with. But like I mentioned, that cold front will just stall. And as it stalls, it'll lift back up. The winds turn around back from the south. And as the winds turn around back from the south, you'll have that increased moisture again for portions of the south, uh, south Texas into Louisiana, uh, Mississippi and Alabama, and especially into uh, Florida as those winds uh, turn around. But beyond that, I mean, it's just the trend continues. I mean, the cooler conditions, even when the winds turn around back down to the south, all that basically means for the south is you'll have increased cloud cover and cl increased rain chances. So when you're talking the middle of July, when you have those two features without a ridge over you, that's going to bring your bring below average temperatures for much of Texas into Arkansas into Louisiana as that ridge continues to remain in place firmly over the Pacific Northwest. Now it's going to be more or less into the interior regions. It's not going to be along the coast like what we were seeing earlier. So a lot the further along the coast you live, you're going to be uh, not as hot for say, especially as we go into next weekend. I mean next week, but. Up here to the north, there's that ridge will continue to dominate and you're going to be seeing uh, well above average temperatures start to creep back in into the northeast as well for much of next week. Uh, there's your precipitation over between just the now and the next seven days through the middle of the month. And you can definitely see out west there's not uh, any rain uh, to come by out west under that ridge high, of high pressure. There's that feature down here by Corpus Christi. That's going to be dumping some very heavy rain into the flooding rains, at least for the next several days. But you can see much of the heavier precipitation remains further south along that no-name storm into portions of Austin, San Antonio, Houston, especially in along Corpus Christi. And there's that front will continue to press southward throughout the week, dumping some rain along with it along the way. And where it kind of stalls out here, uh, down here to uh, the Ohio Valley, into Illinois, Indiana, portions of uh, Ohio, into uh, the Mid-Atlantic states. Again, a good two to four inch swath. Then, of course, along the coast, you'll be getting your heavier rains just over the next several days 
with uh, what's to come with Elsa uh, with that storm. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this system. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.